Hello, family. This is Claude Marie. I am popping in here to tell you all that there may be some static on your device for this particular episode. We were able to edit out about 99% of the static we found. However, your device may still pick it up. I do encourage you to continue listening because this episode has a great guest host, Ms. Mercedes Edney, a Black female entrepreneur, owner and founder of Exora Botanical Beauty, which is based in Charlotte, North Carolina. Mercedes shares some really great gems this episode about entrepreneurship, skin care, as well as effective management and some of the ins and outs of being a small business owner. So I encourage you to keep listening and thank you so much in advance. All right, now to the episode. Hey family, welcome to your work auntie podcast. My name is Claude Marie Holmes and I am your host. I am super excited about today's guest who I have known for a really long time, uh, which is crazy because we met on the internet. <laughs> like I always tell you all, you good people anywhere um, and people that can literally make a huge difference or impact in your life. So you should always be open to meeting people outside of normal channels like work and church, et cetera. So I'm excited to introduce my guest today, Mercedes Edney, who is the founder and owner of Exora Botanical Beauty. And I'm going to now pass it over to her to introduce herself. Hi. I'm kind of excited. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my name is Mercedes Edney. I am owner and founder of Exora Botanical Beauty. Um, I've had my brand for 12 years. In fact, yesterday made 12 years for my yes, business happy anniversary. anniversary. And thank you. And I'm just kind of like happy and excited to do this considering the main reason is you're the reason how I started it. <laughs> yes. yes, it has been a journey. Uh, I, I, Sora was like my baby too for a long time. I was like all up in your business. <laughs> yeah. So I'm um, happy. That was a mixed business. Oh, such an ironic moment. <laughs> Yes. And finally me doing something because I think you're also one of the other people who are like, you need to do something um, outside of just going to work every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so finally here. Uh, <laughs> it took much longer, but no, excited to have you on the show today. I think our listeners could learn a lot from you about your entrepreneur journey. Also, people that want to get in the skincare business. And also, I want to talk about the shift you made because at first you were like a butters business mostly. And then now it's very much more skincare. Mm -hmm. So definitely want to go along that journey with you. And Mercedes, you're still in Charlotte, mm -hmm. right? So you're in North Carolina? Yes. Yeah. I've but been originally from North Carolina, Carolina right? since 2008. Yes. I am originally born and raised. I'm in West Indian. I'm from St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands. I moved to the States um, at 17 when I went to college. I went to Florida Tech uh, in 2002. I have a chemical engineering degree. And then I had gotten a master's in science in environmental health and safety. And I also, also because of you, I had gotten my esthetician license back in 2018. Was it 2018? I think it was 2018. Yeah. Yes. It was before COVID, so, so that's not <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yes. So. It was prior to this good thing we call COVID. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. so, you know, that's all my little, my little, my little degree bundled. <laughs> <laughs> yes. no, you're all mom. Um, so, superwoman all around. I am. I have two little babies. Well, they're not babies anymore. I think of them as babies, but um, oh, wait. My son is five. Funny enough, I had him in 2018. And my daughter is about to be three on the 23rd of this month. Oh, so, yes, Aquarius gang. <laughs> <laughs> and you're a Capricorn. Is it your birthday soon? Yeah, my birthday is in like, it's on the 17th. Happy birthday in advance. Happy birthday in advance. Mm -hmm. yes. Thanks. <laughs> I will probably be relaxing this time around. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I I will be of course <laughs> out of the country for my birthday since uh yeah still can't I, I prefer to not be cold. I'm not mad at that. <laughs> yes, that is my plan. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about Exora. You kind of mentioned that um 
I helped you get Exora started. So <laughs> let's talk about why you started Exora. Like, was it based on a childhood dream or sure. did, it, did it just make sense at the time? <laughs> um, well, at the time, I was like having all kinds of issues because, you know, like when I got out of college around that time, we graduated like the 2007, 2008 class. We went right. We were in a depression. So arguably you would think, OK, you have a chemical engineering degree. It shouldn't be hard to find a job. Wrong. Um, it, like we were, I was finding like positions and stuff like that because I was in Texas for like a year. Did not like it out there. Sorry to the Texans, you know. <laughs> Love right. it out there. Couldn't live there. <laughs> so after like a year, I left. I came. That's when I moved to Charlotte in 08. And I kept getting positions, but they weren't like full time. They kept being like contracting positions. So I'd work for like six, eight months and then be out of a job. I was just like really underemployed. And things was not going well. I was just like, you know, my mom was like, come home and start over. So that's essentially what I did. I moved home. I think it was like 2010 or 20, 2011. I moved home and I spent a year and a half home. And during that time, we used to talk all the time. And mm -hmm. one day you were just like, you know, I don't know if it was talking about skincare or um, we were doing something. And I was just talking about the fact of like, yeah, I really want to do something in skincare. And I, I was like, I don't know what. And he was like, well, why don't you just start your own business? And I was like, huh. <laughs> I never in my mind or my worlds of worlds ever imagined starting a business. Never wanted to, had no desire to, none of that. And I was like, what? And then you gave me this, you were like, you know, why don't you start a business? I never wanted to own a business. I, you know, my ex at the time in college was very like business oriented and I supported it. But at the time I was like, I don't want nothing to do with this. This seems like a lot of work that I don't want to be a part of. And I don't know, like that time when you made a suggestion, I don't know if it was just because of the circumstance where I was, but in at that time, it sounded plausible. It sounded like the exact thing that I needed to do at that moment. And I got really hyper-focused about it. And I was like, you know something? I'm tired of like putting my my life and my livelihood in these companies' hands to do whatever it is that they want to do. I was like, you know what? I got to figure out how to make money on my own and, you know, be able to control that <laughs> And I'd always wanted to work in skincare um, and to be able to like make my own products and stuff like that. I was like, oh, well, this is perfect. So I started doing the research. I spent eight months doing research on ingredients, business practices, marketing, all of this stuff, uh, preparing to launch the products. And I launched it on Twitter. I had like 5,000 followers at the time. And yeah. people were super supportive. They were like, yeah, you know, I'll try it out. And I remember I was working at my little, um, I, I was working a job. My sister had gotten me a job when I was home. And it was a temporary position. And literally the week I I dropped the business or, or opened it up January 2nd, 2012. And that same week that I open up the business it was the same week that I got laid off from the job not kidding my first orders that I packaged up were in the office of that job I still have pictures of it to this day of some of the little jars sitting on of the on my sister's office desk <laughs> so that's how Exora was born and it did start off as like really like natural skincare I was only selling butters and scrubs and I was really known for at the time like my elaborate scent list like yes. I just kept at one scent. point I probably had like a hundred scents it was crazy you had a lot of scents every, every scent you could think of and so I would send her like a, an email I had yes. a custom scent because my custom scent is pomegranate lemon mm -hmm. <laughs> so so I would always say and I used to steal it every time lemon. yes <laughs> every time I had people who had very specific 
sense on what they want. I could always tell. I didn't even have to look at the name that I knew who it was because I was like, yeah, there's only somebody going to be picking this. And then I would be to mix them together and I'd be like, oh, I'm going to keep this for myself. Like, mm-hmm. And it, would get, it got really elaborate. And then over time, I think I just got bored. Um, mm-hmm. I was like, I was doing the butters and the scrubs and I just was like, I was kind of over it. It was maybe like three, four years in and I was like, things started to kind of slow down. And this is around the time when Instagram became a thing. I didn't know nothing about Instagram. And this is, as a business owner, the one thing where like, I wish I knew what I knew now then um, on the marketing on how important social media and a whole in places like Instagram was because had I been able to capitalize on like Instagram at the time I would be a lot further than I am now but I didn't know how to use it I was just like posting stuff I didn't you know I didn't get it mm-hmm. and you know like the, my business suffered because at this point now everybody's you know dropping skincare businesses so it's like it's not yeah. just me it's like 50 million other people are doing it so there's like more people are like going this way going this way or whatever and I just felt really stagnant and I didn't know what to do you know and then I had like a mini rebrand I had gotten it a day I had completely revamped the look and then I started to sell um more products um I started to sell products more facial care but I was still trying to hold on to like like this natural skincare thing. And I think I finally kind of let that go maybe in 2016. Uh, okay. 2016, 2017 is when I really started to do a shift. Um, and I think at that point, I had really gotten into my formulation boots. You know, I was like, girl, you have a degree. What are you doing? <laughs> right. You ain't got to sit here and mix butters and scrubs all day. You know what you're doing. Right. You know mm-hmm. how to do, you know, putting the formulas together. So, you know, I started really pulling out my formulation calendar and I really started to do it, like I would say, the right way. Not to say that I was mm-hmm. doing stuff the wrong way, but I got really specific and intentional about the products that I had started using. And. Um, I, you can tell like even the formulations, they were better. They were like, you know, more advanced. And then I started trusting myself more. Um, and then that's when I started doing stuff like, um, you know, like the acid based products and stuff like that. And, you know, that's really when I really started enjoying reformulating because I was like, I was making things because now at this point, if I'm buying other products and I buy a product that I like and I was like, huh, how can I make this product for myself? Because I'm like, I, there's no reason why I can't. The only way I can't is if I can't get the ingredient. That's the only way I can't do this. So that really became a thing for me of like making things that I like for myself. And based on how that played out, it was like, okay, well, this can help other people. The same way it helped me. And that was really, you know, my mindset on a lot of things and as time evolved um we got to about 2020 and that's when I dropped my now hero line which is the donkey milk products Mm -hmm. um I literally bought that ingredient randomly I was on one of the sites you know looking I always source ingredients every time I go buy new ones I go look and see what else they have and I was like donkey milk what the what <laughs> right. was that? Was, yeah. you know and I had it and I remembered um in 2019 I had made a small batch of moisturizer and my intent at the time was to release it two things happened that prevented that my sister got into a really bad car accident and I ended up having to leave and fly down to Miami to see her and my mom. Um, actually, to this day, her and my mom are the only two that ever got the original formulation <laughs> for the moisturizer because I made it and I took it down there for them because they didn't have any facial products. Right. And also, I was pregnant. <laughs> and I didn't. I found out like not too long after that that I was pregnant with my daughter. 
And that pregnancy kind of took a toll on me. So like <laughs> trying to do new products and releases and stuff that year was a no go. Like I was like, all I have energy for is to just like get all orders that I have going on right now and focus right. on that. And then 2020, the conversation about donkey milk came up and I was like, hey, I have don- a donkey milk product. I was like, I'm going to release it. And lo and behold, that became popular because donkey milk itself, when it comes to the properties of it, it's very much resembles the properties of breast milk. And oh, breast wow. milk is highly, anti- right, it's highly anti-inflammatory, um, soothing. You know, when babies have little rashes and stuff, we usually take breast milk, we bathe them in it, you know, put them on their faces. People use it on their own skin for eczema. Same thing. So during 2020, everybody was wearing masks. Their skin was irritated a lot and they were mm-hmm. breaking out. You know, they call it mask knee. Everybody was breaking right. out, the nurses, all of that stuff. And what would happen is when they started using like the, I, when I dropped the product, it was a soap and the moisturizer at the time. I hadn't released the cleanser yet. Okay. And when I dropped it, that's when people started using it. And I was like, oh my God, like this cleared up my at my mask knee. It's calmed my skin. And it just literally took off after that. Like it was like, you know, everybody was like, oh, document and it just kept going. And that's, you know, how like my business really took off um in 2020. And it's a testimony because when it comes to owning a business you don't know you know what success is gonna look like you don't know if you're gonna take off immediately or gonna take you know take years most businesses don't make it past five years so for my business to literally take off essentially in like its eighth year right it was crazy yeah especially because of the year i had prior to that like it was i would have never imagined that from going from 2019 which was super hard and i didn't make a lot of money and then 2020 came and i made like three times the amount that i made in 2019 so it's just you know you gotta love what you're doing when you have Mm -hmm. a business because if you don't love what you're doing when it doesn't work you're going to give up yeah (laughs) yeah you said so many good things because, yeah, I, I think it's the knowing the ebbs and flows because there's that hustle culture set of, you know, social media. It's like everybody should own their own business and everybody it's like everybody can't ride that roller coaster. Like everybody doesn't even and even knowing what you want. And like for you, you wanted to be in skincare, but it also took a while for you to get to like what you were more passionate about in skincare. Like, cause, you know, the butters and stuff are cool. My skin was nice and moisturized, but, you know, like getting to the actual uh, like aesthetics of, you know, getting rid of acne. And I know one thing you focus on a lot and that you still do now is eczema, because I think you also suffer from eczema and um, mm-hmm. products. You know what's funny? I learned during COVID, I had so oh. I was saying during COVID, I learned really because so, I during COVID, I mentally my body went through it. So I broke out into like I thought it was some kind of just rash on my hand, and it just wouldn't go away. Like the skin was broken, and I just kept treating it. And so I was talking to someone about it casually, and casually, and they go, "So you got eczema?" And I was like, "No." And they're like, mm, "That sounds like eczema." <laughs> so and it's funny you posted a picture the other day, and I was like, "That's exactly what my hand looked like during COVID." So apparently. I do have eczema, <laughs> which apparently is only triggered by extreme stress. <laughs> yeah, I've never had anything since. Yep. And it lasted like six weeks. Like, I remember my hand just looked awful and the skin was broken and I kept applying stuff to it. But had I known what it was, I just, I didn't know what it was. I was like, I guess I can put my hand in right. the cleaning Especially product. if you never had, had it before. Need. Exactly. Did not know what it is. So now I know. I had to go get some of your products if I ever had that happen. But my one little eczema mm-hmm. flare up and then, Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know but yeah like the the whole basis yeah the whole basis of like my products across the board even from the beginning was because I've always had really dry skin and eczema and when I created those butters and scrubs I created under the guise of like it was part of my own skincare journey right so I was like okay I'm using these butters and I was like oh I love using these butters but I'm like I'm missing something I need something else it's not enough which is what Mm -hmm. caused me to then create lotions and creams because I realized that my skin needed the water based products before the butter 
plant-based products. And as I kept doing that, and then I doing that, I was like, okay, I could do something else. I need to exfoliate. So I created, you know, I had the scrubs, but then I created the lactic acid body serum. And I was like, because when I was in, in esthetician school, there was this brand, cannot remember the brand right now. Maybe it'll come to me at some point, but they had this lactic acid body serum, 16%. That thing was amazing. It helped so well with my eczema as well. So I said, hmm, I'm going to make my own. That's <laughs> what I did. That's how I was using that. And then, you know, back then, the craze for Paula's Choice BHA liquid. And I said, man, I need a BHA product because that's great for acne, anti-inflammatory. So I made mine kind of based on like theirs because I really like their product. So, you know, a lot of times my ingrown hair serum, I was like, people get ingrown. I've gotten them before. You know, I don't have a product. People talked about how great um, the European Wax Center um, ingrown hair serum was. So guess what I did? I went and checked their stuff and I made mine based on that. I, of course, when I look at other ingredients and stuff like that, I always kind of like, add other things that I would like but mm-hmm. when I see a product that I like and that's doing something that I like I like to create based on that foundation and then go from there because clearly it works so what else can I add to it to make it better yeah. that's my always my mindset how can I make this product and make it better and make it something that represents my brand because my brand is all about products that are effective that can be can work on the most sensitive skin so i don't do like fragrances and stuff so if you're looking for like products that's like scented and stuff like that that's not me my products are for people whose skin is can be can be sensitive or you know they need something that's not heavily scented and stuff like that because it's effective anybody can use it and even if your skin is sensitive, it is gentle enough to use on sensitive skin. Even down to the retinol that I have now. My retinol is a encapsulated retinol that also has bakuchiol in it as well. And bakuchiol, they call it like the natural version of um, retinol. So okay. I did I did a donkey milk retinol. So okay. I kept it in line with my donkey milk products but then I because I wanted it to be gentle and not irritating while still doing what I needed to do which is you know anti-aging wrinkles fine line texture hyperpigmentation all of these things and on top of that within that product it has in um an ingredient called fullerene which is like a thousand times more effective than vitamin c so it helps oh, wow. with brightening. Yes. And then I have in like a mushroom peptide, which is helps with hydration. So it's a it's a very much action packed retinol. That doesn't irritate your skin. Right. But it works. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But so, it works. I do see a lot of the, the influencer girls tretinoin right now and then their face like breaks out like one of the ladies like she just kept getting these really bad breakouts from it and she's like oh i just have to go through this like shit and i mean it was like a long time where her entire face was just huge like acne kept coming to the surface some of them people have no business using tretinoin some of them girls are using tretinoin that do not need to be using it there's no need for you to be wearing using something that powerful unless you have like grade three acne or something going on you haven't there's no need for you to be using tretinoin honestly that's a listen tretinoin that's you're using like accutane territory oh okay wow very strong it's 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 grade a when it comes to um ingredients it's the Mm -hmm. gold standard when it comes to like an ingredient that can do everything for your skin but you have to be able to use it wisely and you need to know that the products that you're using around it has to be able to support what it does to your skin because tretinoin is so strong 
it dries your skin out. It'll be very dehydrated. So if you're not using a cleanser, a moisturizer that's gentle, but very hydrating to support that, your face is going to feel like it's falling off because it's going to literally be so dehydrated, it's going to hurt to the touch, which can cause another host of problems. Because Mm -hmm. if you dehydrate your skin further enough, you're going to go in the opposite direction of where you essentially want it to go, which is improving your skin. You're going to break your moisture barrier. And that takes even longer to fix than whatever initial issues you had to begin with. So, yeah. Them influencer yeah, girls be having these people jack their skin up. <laughs> right. That's the thing with all these different trends and something I'm trying to be mindful of is not mixing products that don't go together because it's like, oh, this company has this retinol 24 hour and this person sells hyaluronic acid and then this person has a collagen and I've been trying to do the research because you should just buy one routine from one company, but you know, we don't do that. <laughs> but trying to make sure I'm not jeopardizing my skin by mixing products that don't really support each other. You can mix and match products. What you have to be, because it's not necessary. Of course, when you buy products online from one company, of course, it's going to be the most seamless thing to do because they were formulated to work together. So, right? But a lot of times, sometimes you get other products that just within other lines or other companies that just work better for your skin, which is fine. Yeah. The only thing, the most important thing that you have to think about when you're dealing with uh, skin care and product is actives. You can mm-hmm. buy 50 million cleansers from 50 million companies. Whatever. You're just washing your face, right? But when you start dealing with actives, when you start exfoliating, using retinols, peels, all these type of things, that is where people end up in problems. Because if the product does not say specifically that it exfoliates and people don't know what an ingredient does... Because I've done Mm -hmm. a lot of consults and a lot of times where people end up in problems is they're buying products and they don't know what it does, but Mm -hmm. they saw that somebody was talking about it and they end up buying these products. And because it says like deep, pour something or whatever, they don't realize that that's an exfoliating product. So they have been using it twice a day, every day and their skin is dehydrated and they're breaking out and they don't realize why it's happening. So I've had to like remove those products out of their routine and basically have them do a basic routine to rebuild their skin's batch barrier. So that's the most important part is you understanding ingredients and understanding that like, yeah, I shouldn't be using an exfoliant every day and then doing a retinol and then like, oh, let me try this peel next week. Like, you know, that's when things start getting real hectic. And then your your face starts to fall off, essentially. So exactly. that's the most important thing when it comes to skincare. And two, when you have products, you have to give yourself time to see if the products work. People buy products, use them for a week. Yeah. And then they put, oh, my face is not better. They put it down, they go buy something. <laughs> yeah, you you're need not to use a product for at least a month. Yeah. To know if you're actually going to yield any results. Because you're most times, if you want to use it for a week or so, you're not really getting true results. So you got to give yourself at least a month or four to six weeks, which is the period of your skin cycle, which is usually mm-hmm. four to six weeks, depending on your age or skin health, to really see a difference. And most people don't know that. <laughs> Uh, I remember some of your posts back in the day on Twitter about that. Uh, but you would say like, you know, don't start all this stuff today and then think it's going to look, you're going to look different in two weeks or all the vitamin C and your hyperpigmentation is going to disappear in two days. It's not. So, yeah. It does take a while. Yeah. Like, I generally haven't had thing about any skin issues. But yeah, I think a common thing in our community is hyperpigmentation. And so we are always looking for quick fixes and really hard right. solutions. I literally had a friend messaged me yesterday she was at target and she's gonna laugh that i even retell her this story because i get <laughs> her about this all the time she was at target she's trying to buy like the dennis gross um everyday peel or whatever and then she bought another cleanser 
in the line that also exfoliates. And I was like, what are you doing? She's right. like, I'm trying to get this exfoliation done as gone as fast as possible. I said, baby, the way you're going is going to be right back. I mm-hmm. said, you cannot exfoliate like that. She's like, yeah, since I come use it every day. No, you cannot. I don't give a damn what that box telling you. You cannot. A lot yeah. of these companies are doing that. They're telling people, oh, it's gentle enough to exfoliate every day. No, it's not. Do not believe the hype on that. I don't know why companies are doing that. I I think because they want you to run through the products faster, but it's a bad idea. There is no reason why you need to exfoliate your skin every single day. The majority of us do not need to do that. No, I agree. Do not. In fact, it's going to cause more problems than good. Most times. It's unnecessary. If you are using the right foundation products, your skin is going to do what it's supposed to do. But if you're not using the right products foundation wise, you're always going to be using other products to make up for the lack of what you're getting in those products. And I tell people all the time, which is why I talk about, I have like a barrier routine bundle that I sell. And I was like, these three products is all you need for your routine regularly. If you want to exfoliate food three times a week, cool. But these three products that you use, the cleanser, the donkey milk cleanser, the sea moss toner, donkey milk moisturizer, that you'll be straight. I can use them products every single day and my skin will be fine. Like I won't exfoliate for weeks. Your skin naturally exfoliates on its own. And allow your body, allow your skin to do what it's supposed to do. Yes, you can exfoliate. You want to, you know, speed it up. Cool. But to think that you need to be doing that every day, absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely not. Especially, not. So, in, like, especially the chemical ones thin your skin. I used to use one. Um, correct. Like I said, I know you have skin issues, but I had these real little tiny bumps once. And then they were like, use this thing. It made it so I couldn't wax my eyebrows because it made my skin so thin up here that it was like when I would wax my eyebrows, it would like pull it made off you. It made it sensitive. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's exactly so what like, happened because you're you are essentially exfoliating off layers of your skin. So now you done made it sensitive, and and um. Uh, so now sometimes even when you you wash your face or you put on a moisturizer, your skin is stinging mm-hmm. because you don't thinned it out so bad because that's what happens. I, I remember, you know, um, somebody when they told me they was using the products and their face was stinging and they was like, maybe I'm a- allergic. And I said, you're not allergic. Your face is dehydrated so bad that even those products that's there to soothe it is stinging it because it's it's that sensitive i said it's going to feel like that for a couple of days until your skin starts to heal Mm -hmm. then you damn near have an open wound at that point right but they don't see it though because they're still seeing the skin so they can't they're not realizing what's happening but I'm like, I'm telling you, I said, I know people, I said, please do not exfoliate everything because it, it, it looks good at first. And then a couple weeks in, it starts getting crazy. And then they try to exfoliate even more because that's what happens. You, you, right. it, it looks real good. And then you keep going. And then that's when it's, the skin starts to dehydrate out and you start breaking out. And he said, oh, I need to exfoliate some more. And then your whole face just erupts in a worst work breakout you've ever seen in your life and now you it's gonna take you another year now to fix that because it takes months to fix that. correct and yes so once you finally heal your skin then you gotta deal with the hyperpigmentation after that so yeah so i'm i am very big my whole thing when it comes to skincare while everybody talks about you know exfoliates and all the new products and all this good stuff i stay right at the beginning line of are you consistent with your skincare routine are you cleansing and moisturizing your skin every day are you hydrating your skin are you wearing sunscreen or if you cannot answer these questions 
with the right answers to me, you ain't got no business using anything else. It's a common but black people don't need some sunscreen, and that's something you definitely been advocating. Maybe. Like, you need sunscreen, regardless of I, your shade. Even home in the Caribbean, it is... Yes, even in the Caribbean, when I go, when I travel overseas and stuff like that, every time I see black, like, I'm always walking around when I go to a different country and I buy sunscreen in whatever country I'm at. It's, like, a thing for me. Like, I I have sunscreen from Greece, Bali. Wherever I go, I'm always going to find sunscreen that I didn't have before. And I tell them all the time, I'm like, yes, you're black. You need sunscreen. You mm-hmm. might not see the damage now, but you will see it later. And by then, it's going to be too late. Like, yep. And it's not just about, like, black people don't really, when it comes to the cancer part from the sun, that's very, very low chance of ha- happening. But the what you need to be concerned about when it comes to the sun is the sun is the number one cause of inflammation in your skin. So, if you are somebody that deals with acne, psoriasis, stress, eczema, anything inflammation-based, the sun can trigger it. So, sunscreen is a protective measure of not just you getting hyperpigmentation. It's a protective measure to keep your skin from flaring from all these different things that you might be prone to. Because if you're already prone to it, the sun just helps it along. Because I'm not kidding when I tell you, if I don't be wearing sunscreen I'm outside or whatever, I can, like, it can cause me to have, like, eczema breakouts because of the heat. And people don't realize how easily and how, how easily the sun can trigger these things within your body. And it's like, so it's not about cancer. It's about regular day-to-day things that you want to be fighting against when it comes to um, dealing with uh, skin issues. Right. And internally as well. Yeah. No, I'm so, I just love how knowledgeable you are and everything you're sharing. But I want to jump back to the business side real quick, even though you shared some good skincare nuggets. Yes. What is your typical day like as an entrepreneur in your own skincare brand? Um, most times when I get up, um, the first thing I do, cause I have an assistant now, thank God, I made that really bad. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a virtual assistant. So most times when, once I, he has already sent me whatever emails, whatever schedule I have for the day, um, what I have meetings, whether I have, um, I need to talk to like my warehouse manager. Um, I talk to like my uh PR, social media, um, marketer, all of that. I usually do all of that by the time I get up after the gym. So once I get up, take my son to school, I go to the gym, and then that's pretty much kind of like when my day starts. So I'm responding to emails. I'm talking to my team, whether online or on the phone, just to, you know, know what we're going to be doing today. Um, it's important for us to stay in constant communication because, you know, you never know what's been going on. Things can happen. Um, I'm probably a little bit more involved than maybe sometimes other owners are, but Mm -hmm. I feel like when your team sees that you're there and you care and that you know, you want to make sure that they're good. They're going to do their jobs. I know that, you know, I have a really good team. Um, Laura, who works for me as my warehouse manager, she's been working with me since 2021. Amazing. I don't have to ever, I, I don't have to step foot over to the business. And I know that everything is taken care of over there. I know it's clean. I know it's um, organized. The orders are going out. She'll let me know when things need to be restocked. All of that. And it's important to have people on your team that not only do the job, but they love what they do. And I love having people 
I love showing that and I love having people that I can take care of in that way because to me it makes me feel like okay I'm doing my job right when my team is showing up and and doing their job at such a high capacity because that means that they enjoy what they're doing that means that I'm not you know out here treating them like (laughs) you know like whatever and they enjoy it so some days it can be me just um doing back-end stuff you know (laughs) like inventory purchasing or you know calling and having meetings and then other days it might get real hectic like you know like after Black Friday and I'm at the business helping ship our orders it's just a day-to-day thing you never know sometimes what might happen but if I gotta jump in and ship our orders that's what it is Yo, it's so crazy because I'm since I've been here from the beginning to hear like the transformation of like you having to come home from work and like your your warehouse was a I think a room <laughs> in the house um, to see how much you've grown. You got a whole warehouse manager, my second warehouse. bedroom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so no. So congratulations! Yeah, I literally that. have like a whole place on its own. <laughs> that is nice. Yeah, I'm so happy to see it. Oh, it's awesome. awesome. Yeah, I'm like after 12 years, like you said, for your business to still be around, because like you said, most businesses don't make it, but to make it and also be able to see the growth and also be able to employ, employ other people. Now you're the person out here giving people the opportunities right. that you can easily find back in 2008 and seven. Yeah, I do remember that was like a crazy time because I'm thinking like, you have a chemical engineering degree, like you know the stuff. And so, um, well, I'm glad because I give a lot of unsolicited opinions. So I'm glad that one worked out. Why? Like, I would have never thought of that on my own. I would have never considered starting my own business. Like, that wasn't even something that I even considered. And it just, it just felt so right in that moment when you said it. And I was just like, this is an amazing idea. <laughs> I was like, you know, let's do it. But it's, it's crazy to see like tra- tra- the trajectory of where I went and to let people know, like, when you really love something and you love what you do, yes there has been years of struggle because last year was a hard year and I've been very transparent about that and I think it was a hard year for a lot of businesses like we just you know with the state of the country people losing jobs all kind of stuff like people not spending money like they usually do so you got to be more inventive on you know how you market and all this other stuff and you got to push through and then, you know, we're in a new year, so it's time to build, do something different and, you know, to keep the business afloat. You got to, I'm doing everything I can because I know the products are great. Yes. That's not a question. Now I just wanted in more people hands. Right. So that's just yeah. like my goal. Yeah. No, that's really cool. And you actually led to what I was going to ask about is, so what is the hardest thing you think about being your, like owning your own business? Like what are, what is the thing that if you could just not have to experience it? I think the hardest thing about owning your own business, especially when you are at the point of employing other people is when you hit financial struggles and feeling like you're going to let those people down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that because it's not about you anymore or just you. It's now, you know, you're employing other people who depend on that money to feed whatever. And I'm not kidding when I tell you, like last year, I went into my savings. I made sure my team was paid because that's just you know what I'm saying like they take care of me the same Mm -hmm. way how yeah I pay them but they make they do the things that allow me to do what I need to do so Mm -hmm. I'm gonna always try to make sure that they're good and I know people might be like oh well you you can just not pay I'm like no I'm not gonna pay them they worked so what you mean (laughs) Um, they work they're supposed to get paid it doesn't matter what I got going on it don't yeah. matter if the, the the business isn't doing this. They still worked. Right. It's so work. they need to get paid. They have their own bills to pay. So for me, especially last year, having those moments of like, you know, what am I going to do or whatever, that really kind of just 
put me in a perspective of like, you know, what can I do to make sure that we don't have these issues again going mm-hmm. into a new year? And what can I do to like really put the pedal to the metal and get the, the funds back up where they're supposed to be to make sure that we don't have these issues? You know what I mean? So it's yeah. the stuff like that when you think about like it's stressful. Like I was I was really stressed out just thinking about that because it was like well yeah and that's, those are, I think that was like one of the biggest lessons that I learned last year because that was the first time since hiring people that I was having like monetary issues of any kind and I was just like you know I'm going to pull this money out of my pocket and make sure that they paid until this situation is rectified like that's just what it's going to mm-hmm. be and because they know that they take care of me right they make sure that I'm good they make sure they, they come in and they handle certain things and they make sure that I'm good and they make sure that like if there's things going on because there had been times when I called Laura and I was like I was so stressed and I'm like oh my god Laura I forgot to order this and do it she's like I already did and I was like what and I was like oh my god I didn't get enough of this ingredient she's like don't worry I, I already made it enough that we covered the orders that we need to get out and I was just like <laughs> so I was like, like you. yeah you love those kind of employees that are proactive yeah Maybe people, when you, and that's why when I look at other companies and I look at how they treat their staff and I was like, you don't want to keep these people because when you take care of people and you show that you care about their well being, they're always going to make sure that you're good. And yeah. she knew what I was dealing with at the time, especially with the finances and stuff like that. And so she's the one that normally, she's the one that's been making the products for the past two years. So she knows like, okay, if we don't have the full amount of ingredients that we usually have, she'll know, okay, I'm just make half the batch instead of making whatever. So the whole time I'm stressing about, you know, oh my God, we don't have enough to make this product. She's like, yeah, we do. I made enough to cover the products that we have right now. And I was like, girl, <laughs> I was like, I can kiss you right now. <laughs> Hopefully Lord had a nice Christmas present. <laughs> I've done roses, I've done raises or whatever to show like, hey, I value you as a, a team member. I value you as a um, somebody who works for me. And I'm really appreciative of what you do because I don't ever want it to ever be confused that like I can't, um, like I don't value the people that work for me. I'm very appreciative of like people that work for me. I'm very blessed to have people like that who show up for me. And I think it's just a testimony of like me being very transparent um, and and me caring about the people that work for me. And it's not just like, you know, oh yeah, like it's a job, da, 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 da. because I remember what that felt like when I work for companies and they don't mm-hmm. care. They don't care if you sick. They don't care if you got something going on or whatever. If you don't show up or something happened, they just replace you. And I don't want that kind of culture for my business. I Yes, you know, it's a small business and I can see a lot of things, but you create the culture that you want within yes. your business. And I want the culture for my business to that people that, you know, this is not like a slave shop and we don't care and whatever, like, you know, if you have something going on and you let me you know, you let me know or whatever, it's fine. And until now, I've never had no issues. Nobody abuses it. Nobody does anything because they know they come in and they work. I don't have to be there and the job still gets done. I last year, it was months. And they didn't see me. They would just call me on the phone if they needed something. It was months they wouldn't see me because I was home with the kids and all of this stuff. And the orders was going out. <laughs> yes. I went home for two months. The orders never stopped moving. So those are the type of things like when you think about when you have a business and when you start to employ other people, think about how you're going to treat the people that work for you because that's important. In order for you to, you cannot have a business and a growing business without great help. Mm-hmm. And if you're not good at managing finding somebody else to do it yeah yeah because you're going to need good help i think some people think they're good at managing others but you're not (laughs) so if you find yourself not knowing how to relate and some of us are just more results oriented so it's not necessarily a bad thing but if you're somebody where it's like people's third 
but you may want to get a nice person in between to be that liaison to make sure people are are first because it's people processes and systems not just Yes, customer service isn't your thing. Find somebody else that's good at talking to people or whatever. Because I know somebody who's like that. They have a business and they can't keep people yeah. because the way they talk to women, I'm like, you can't talk to people like that. These are human beings. Like, you can't just talk to people crazy. And then you also have to understand that everybody doesn't learn the way that you do. So you got to teach people in a way that they're going to understand it. Like, you can't make somebody feel stupid if they don't understand, you know, with how you're explaining it. Then maybe you need to reevaluate the way how you're training people and how they're thinking. If they're not learning it that way, then <laughs> exactly. Revamp. Yeah. That's a you problem. <laughs> so, you know, all of those type of things all those type of things matter and I I had to learn that in the past two years with employing people and I also I, I'm not gonna lie I, I and I was also fortunate in that the people who I hired they're just really great workers as well you know and I think it just it shines more again when you take care of people and that's just statistically proven you pay people well you take care of people they're gonna show up to work every day and they go make your company yeah. money because they like being there that's just that's statistically facts <laughs> like you know unfortunately that's not a thing in america mm -hmm. american companies they will ignore that but it's the truth you take care of your company you take care of your staff you take care of your people they're gonna want to come to work and that's just what it is and that's what i believe in because i never liked most of the jobs yeah. i had Sometimes you didn't know why you were there. Like, I think, oh, no, there's like a clear, with smaller businesses, there's more of a clear direction and alignment with the mission and what you're trying to accomplish. I feel like sometimes when you get in these bigger companies or as the companies grow, they lose sight of that by making sure everybody feels like they're part of the mission and the outcomes of the organization. And so when people start to lose that, then they don't feel connected, they don't feel supported. And we tend to start paying people in order to make profit versus paying people marketable, you know, living wages. But no, those are some great gems. I think people a lot of these companies are also really bad at hiring lower management. That's something that I've always seen. Lower management is always something that falls through the cracks because those are the people who are above like the ground workers for most companies. And lower management, if it's not good, it controls the tempo of how the rest of the the ground crew moves. So when you have somebody who really shouldn't be a manager or is bad at it, you have that high turnover rate. Your company is not going to profit the way that you think it is because you don't have the proper people in place to lead. So um, that's another thing. While they're like trying to convince you that, you know, to be part of the company and you know, feeling like whatever, but how are you gonna feel like that if your management oh, sucks? You. So it's, that's just one thing I've learned from like working at different companies. That they also don't train managers when they get in the role. So sometimes they take high potential employees and they're like, Oh, you could be a manager, but then they don't give you the training you need are the counseling or coaching on how to talk to people, how to keep processes going. Because a lot of time managers are bad because they're they're not confident. Like they're they're concerned. Like they're kind of like, why should I even be in this role? <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. How do I get these results? I'm not just an individual contributor. So now I'm worried about <laughs> other people. But I think if we spent more time making sure our managers felt confident and supported um, and that they understood what they were supposed to be doing, I think you'd get better managers because the I feel like the ones that treat their employees the worst are usually the most insecure. Like they're just, they feel like at any moment the shoe's going to drop and you're going to realize they don't know what they're doing yeah. or something's going to happen. And so they're trying to protect themselves in a way that is not actually helpful. So no, like you said, I think that's important. Um, and so I asked you like, what was the hardest thing? And I think you already touched on it, but what do you love most about having Exora and being your own boss? Um, I enjoy being creative through my business um I think it's one of those things where like whenever I have stuff going on or I'm like when everything else is going on around me and it allows me to have the freedom to how I want to move I always realize you know what working on jobs I always felt very like 
stagnant. Like I felt like I was just caged up all the time. Everything had to be this time, this time, this time. And I don't really think that was for me. Um, having my own business has allowed me the, the, to move way more freely. Um, it has allowed me to, although it's very demanding and I have lost count of the amount of hours and time that I have put into right. my business more than any job I've ever had in my life. Um, I've put countless time and hours into mm-hmm. my business, but it's my business and it's my first baby. And to see something that I created grow and evolve into all of this is something like I am immensely proud of. Um, and I'm also kind of a control freak. So it's fun to be able to have this <laughs> that I can focus in on other than like people or other mm-hmm. things. So it's like, I have this thing where, um, and I think that's what I enjoy most about it. That, that like whenever, because people ask me like, what do you do for fun? I'm like formulate. <laughs> Like I, I have periods of time during the year where I just really get in my creative bag and I just want to like make new products. So I sit and I do, I enjoy the, the ingredient sourcing and the stuff of it all and figuring out like what's going to go well with this and stuff like that. So that's probably like one of my favorite parts of, you know, making of of this business is the making of the new products watching it getting to my customers hands seeing you know how they feel about it and stuff like that so that's probably like one of my best things and people who are just like reaching out to me from all walks of life and telling me how much the products have made a difference in their skin that's like that is like my like inject caffeine into my <laughs> veins like that will boot like I could be having a worse day and if a customer emails me or hits me up on socials and tells me like how much better their skin is or their kid's skin is like that's all I need for the high for the rest of the day <laughs> no that's dope and so what advice would you give to anyone who wants to start a business make sure it's something that you actually love if you want to start a business, do the research, um, but don't try to wait till you know everything. You're never going to know everything before you start. There's always going to be something when you start a business that you didn't see coming until you're in the thick of it. Um, just but love what you want. Love what you're doing, because there's going to be times when things might get crazy Um and you're going to start wondering why you're doing this. And you have to love what you're doing to get through those times or you're going to quit. I guarantee it. And there will be times, whether it's financial times, whether, you know, something else crazy is happening. It doesn't matter. It's just there's always going to be ebbs and flows when it comes to having a business and issues and things can get really frustrating but love what you do. Don't just do it as some like cash grab or think you're going to get rich in a year. Like most companies do not. Mm -hmm. Unless you already have funding from somewhere, you're just not going to go into a new business just making buku money out the gate. So don't go and look at these, you know, TikTok pages and Instagram pages of people was like, oh, I started my business two years ago and now I'm making $2 million a year. Yeah, okay. Nice. <laughs> There's something that them people ain't telling you. Right, yeah. I guarantee it. So just know that, you know, you're going to put your head down, do what you want to do, pace yourself. And if you need to have another job, have another job because I surely have had multiple jobs over the course of these 12 years to supplement when like my business wasn't making enough for me to like, you know, whatever. And if guess what, if something happened this year and I'm not making kind of money, guess who will be right back down there greasing up their uh, um, resume and getting a job? Me. Cause I got kids. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> so don't be scared to start over. Don't be scared to fail. And I sit in as somebody who is terrified of failing. Don't be scared to fail. Don't be scared to bet on yourself. 
you cannot have a business and be scared to bet on yourself. You have to bet on yourself every time. If you ain't betting on yourself, nobody else is going to do it. That's true. You have to have the confidence. When I talk about, I can be like, you know, feeling crazy about anything else. But when I talk about my products and my business, there is zero hesitation. Right. The I, that is something that I'm 100% confident about. That is what something I can walk into any room and talk about. I can sell you any product I have because I know all about it. I know what it can do. I know how great it is. And I understand how it works. Yet I know how to explain to you why it works on your skin and how it benefits you. But whatever it is that you are trying to sell, you have to be able to do those things. You have to be able to talk about it in confidence. You have to be able to explain why it's necessary for that person to have it and how they use it. And, you know, all of these things and you have to walk in that purpose because if you don't believe it, nobody else will. Right. So just research and be confident in whatever it is that you're trying to sell. That's yeah, that's pretty. I, that's excellent. I'm in a program right now and we talk a lot about sharing your vivid story or sharing like how this thing relates or changed your life. And I think a lot of like what you even started was it was based on things you needed and saw that people needed sensitive skin products and things for ingrown hairs. But you've always been passionate about it and you made changes. I think what people also re- think is that first idea or that first batch of products is going to be the millionaire thing, but you have to be willing to grow and change <laughs> and shift with the market and, you know, change up formulations. And so I think that's something that people can definitely see from you. Um, and so my last question, I actually have two questions because one, you can, you can answer them together mm-hmm. though. I believe you offer skincare consultations. Mm-hmm. So I want you to talk about that, but then also generally tell people how to find you and how to find your awesome products. I, so first question, I actually did. I have not been offering it up as of late just because I have been so, so, so busy. Um, but I do answer skincare questions. I've had people email me. I've had people DM me. And, you know, I do answer it. Like, because I have not had time to, like, offer, like, my paid consultations, usually when people hit me up and they ask me, I still answer it because I love skincare and I like to help people. So if I have time that I can answer the questions or whatever, I will. Um, In regards to where you can find me, you can pretty much find me on Twitter. I will never call it X. I don't care. (laughs) I mean, Twitter, (laughs) Instagram. (laughs) Uh, I refuse. I'm not calling it that. <laughs> you can find me on Twitter um, as the skin um the skincare bully, or no, not the skin. You can find me on Instagram as the skincare bully. Okay, but Twitter and um TikTok, I'm just skincare bully, and my business pages across Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all of them is Exora BB, which is I X O R A B B. So, um, so that's all the business pages are on the socials. And then my personal page, which I still talk about skincare and everything else, um, is the skincare bully. So, but yes, you can find me here. I'm always talking about skincare. Um, I talk about other things too, but I somehow always relate back to skincare somehow. (laughs) (laughs) I cannot help myself, but yeah. So if you ever have questions, and especially if you are on Twitter, I am always usually, I'm probably most active on there. So if you do have questions and about something about skincare or, or the products, you can also email um, me at contact at ixorabb.com. Um, that's the customer service um, thing. And if it's something that I can answer or whatever, I will definitely respond and answer your questions especially if it has to do with my products as well i don't have any problem explaining my products and stuff like that so yeah because i just love talking about skincare yeah (laughs) it's very evident and it's i think it's so exciting and i and really want everyone who's listening to hear how passionate she is about what she does and so that's what makes it worth it and being able to come back to it i think a lot of us do things especially some of these I'm not shaming MLMs, but if somebody tells you to get into it because you could make money real quick. And most of us aren't passionate about those things. We're just trying to make money. So if you're going to invest time and energy and countless hours, do it for something that you can 
talk about and, and it makes you excited. It makes you smile. It makes your, you know, your rate of speech pick up because you're just so excited. So I'm so proud of you, Mercedes, and how far you've come in your company. And I thank you. you success <laughs> in another 12 years, another 24, or maybe you're going to sell it for multi-million dollars and then make another skincare company. Who knows? <laughs> like all of those great know. things. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so I'm so excited. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I've you shared so much great nuggets about not only skincare, but how to be an effective manager, take care of your employees, and some things to consider as an entrepreneur, as a business owner. And so I really hope that everybody listening has paid attention and reaches out if you have questions. Um, because Mercedes also, even if you want to start your own business and just want to chat. She doesn't have a ton of free time, but she's also very supportive of, of especially women and black women and, and anybody, honestly, that's trying to start a business for sure for some mentorship or feedback. So she's available and I'm, I'm excited to have known you for a really long time. I think it's like, it's like 15 years now. And I know. It gotta be, it gotta be like 15. That's for crazy. real. We, we have crazy. our trait song days of like, uh, LOL smiley face. Uh, yeah. So like, uh, well, that's, that's when we go back. <laughs> so if you all Twitter and that you know there was a specific period where there was a lot of Trey songs on Twitter. So um, that's mm-hmm. a real point for you. So no, I've known you a long time. And I am exceptionally proud. Yeah. Now, for those of you listening, please like, subscribe, follow, share. Um, and also in the comments, if you have any questions for me or suggestions for topics, or if you want Mercedes to come back and talk about more skincare um, or what it's next, because what we didn't get to talk about and what we'll talk about in the future is what's next for Exora, like what new products are coming out or other things. Um, so very excited. Again, thank you. And thank you all for listening. Yes.